This is Code.org, and this is the Sound Editor class. Uh, edit sample sounds to create effects. Let me see if I can see what's going on here. In Sound Editor, write the static method increase volume. The method takes the parameters double sound for the sound to use and double amount for the amount to increase the volume. Okay, so we need to find, where would this be? Sound Editor? Aha, so this is where we need our method. Okay, so let's do this one at a time. The method takes the parameters. Wait a minute. First, we need an increase volume, and it needs to be a static method. So if it's static, we're going to want it to be public, and then we're going to do static because static means, well, it means several things, but it means that all instances of the class, all objects that we create, can access this method, and we don't have to even create an object to use it. It will behave the same. Also, it could access statics static variables if we have them. That being said, public static, what are we going to return though first? I need the return type. Uh, the method returns a new double array. Wow, lots of lists here, or arrays. Double, um, and then to signify that's an array like this. And the method is increase volume. Cool. Are we going to pass it any parameters? We are. So we have a, ooh, the parameter is a list or a double array again. Oh, called sound. And then we have another parameter, a double amount, which looks to be the amount that we're going to increase volume by, quote unquote. Okay. This all looks good to me. And then the method returns a new double array. All right. Well, that tells me I need to new make a new double array. Blah, blah. And what is it? Containing the sound with volume increased? Oh, okay. So I'm going to call it not load. Uh, loud will be my new array. And then new double now, guys, keep in mind when declaring array, you must, you absolutely have to give Java a length. You can't just be willy-nilly, be like, ah, I don't know, figure it out later. Java's going to say, no, I'm mad at you. Actually, what it says is error, but that's a different story. Um, so let me do sound, right? And the reason I'm going to do sound is it's right here. So if loud, let me check again, the method returns a double array containing sound with the volume increased. Well, what is sound? Hmm, sounds an array. So if we're going to increase the volume of this entire list of this entire array, then I need another array that will store all of those values. So it would have to be the exact same size. So sound dot length. Now I have an array called loud. Finally, I need to actually, well, perform the math. So the volume is increased by multiplying the sample value by amount. Ooh, I don't like all this terminology they're using. So the sample, I'm going to assume that each time I loop through sound, that is what they mean by sample. So I'm going to do a for loop now. For int index is going to be equal to zero. All right. And then index is going to have to be less than sound dot length because I don't want to go past the end of sound. And then each time I want to go index plus plus. So index goes up by one. All right. First off, if they're going to use this word sample, I am two. Um, this isn't necessary, but I think it makes my code more readable. Readable. So I'm going to call double sample to make this clear. And what is sample going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to the current sound we are on. So sound index. And sound index will be, at first, it will be the first sound in our list, right? Because index starts at zero. So arrays are indexed at zero. The first sound in our list will be index zero. So sound index zero will be equal to sample. And then we'll keep looping through. Keep in mind, once index, keep in mind, index will always go up by one because that's what this means, index plus plus. And we will stop running our fold loop from this little curly bracket to that little curly bracket once index is equal to the length of sound or it's greater. Index always has to be less, otherwise the loop stops, which means we don't go past the end, no bugs. So sample, and then what is, uh, oh yeah, we need loud to be equal to whatever the current sample is times amount, okay? Now you might say, Mr. Kaiser, can't you just shorthand this, get rid of this whole thing, put sample here, kill that, blah, blah, blah. You can, I like this. This makes it more readable. So now that will do that. And then I'm gonna finally return loud. So I'll return this whole big array. All right, um, I could be able to run this. It's probably gonna throw errors since we haven't finished. Hmm. Actually, wait a minute. It's gonna throw errors because it's wrong. All right, guys, I need this index, right? So my program needs to specify 
that the loud index, that is going to be equal to whatever point in my array, that individual index is going to be set to the value of whatever the sound is at that index times the amount. So sample is the sound at that index, amounts whatever we pass. So there we go, loud at that index, that's what it will be equal to. Then we return the entire loud array. All right. Declare and initialize a double array that stores the sample values extracted from calling sound loader, which are they really not going to show us? What's this do? Oh, hey, hey, is this the beat? <sighs> I think it is. Anyway, sorry. Uh, okay, so now, ah, right here is what we're doing. Okay, so use sound loader read to extract sample values from the sound file. And this is going to be a double array that stores, okay, so... I'll say double, blub, blub. And then what is this file name? It's called beat. So apparently it's going to give us the length of the beats or the volume levels. I don't know. I'll call this beat. Uh, sure, I'll just call this beat. Um, and that's going to be equal to sound. Oh, I don't like that they're not letting us see this. Loader.read. Okay, guys, so this must be another. This is sound loader as a class that we're calling on directly. Therefore, if we're calling read, you can assume read's a static method as well, because we're not instantiating it. We're calling it directly. But all that fancy language, we're going to be calling read, and then I need to pass it beat dot wave. Okay, cool. And so this is going to be an array of doubles. So an array of decimal values, 1.7, I don't know, whatever volume, whatever beats in here, it somehow is going to spit out uh, decimals values or double values. Okay, now I need to call our method and our method, keep in mind, returns an array called new sound. Okay, and so I declare a double equal array equal to new sound. And what am I going to assign that? Well, now I can call sound editor. And what's our static method that I can call directly? Increases volume. Now, this doesn't work. I have two parameters, right? I need a sound array and an amount to increase it by. So my sound array, I named beat. I guess I get to pick the amount. Let's do 2.7. Why? I don't know. And let's see what I broke. Let's go ahead and test. Oop. Let's see. Sound double, sound loader. Ah, louder. Ah. Oh, should I show this now? <gasps> Guys, I hear sound. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. It's kind of boring, actually. It's pretty cool, though. Ooh, it's getting faster. Wait, can I change? Is that what this does? Oh, that's loud. Okay, that was a mistake. Cool, though. Hey, hey, it works. We're fancy. Awesome. And this is one of the potential uses of static methods. I can't wait to see what else we're going to be doing with our, uh, yeah, with our static keyword. Onward.